to Fat Boy Rob, who thinks Cass will win the fucking lot, in quote marks. Um, David, do you think Cass will win the fucking lot? Uh, no. Uh, so, I don't. So, I, I've... Uh, I'm a bit of an outlier here, I think, but I've predicted them as low as 10. Uh, sorry, Fat Boy Rob. Um, they, they, they've, they've brought some good players in. Um, you know, people like my Fanua and Jake Mamo and Westerman, uh, the git that's Kenny Edwards uh, have come in. Uh, but they've lost some really good players. You know, Peter Matautier and Michael Shenton and Grant Millington and Sonny LaFayre. Uh, I, I don't see the squad being markedly stronger than it was last year. I don't rate the halves there. I mean, obviously, uh, obviously they've got a very good uh, hooker, <laughs> uh, ex-Man of Steel. Uh, but more than anything, I think the coach is shit. So, <laughs> I, I, I honestly, I never rated Radford when he was at Hull. Uh, I've not changed my mind. I could be wrong. Uh, he's obviously a tough guy. He's, uh, you know... Um, uh, he's um, will have respect to the players. I'm sure sure of that, uh, and want discipline within his side. But I don't, I just don't see him as a, a great coach that's going to get the best out of this side. So I think I think Cass are in for a disappointing season. Well, you're not too much of an outlier because I've got them ninth. I mean, someone has to finish everywhere. You have to pick a place for everyone, and with Huddersfield outperforming everyone else's expectations in my expectations everyone else has to drop down a bit um i just think there's too many wild cards at cast gone are people you could rely on at least on the pitch for consistency in like holmes and metallia how consistent were both of those last year um shenton and millington absolute you know leadership consistency yeah, uh, you knew what you were going to get and in come a whole bunch of wild cards you know, Edwards, Fenua, Faremo, Mamo. Mamo's a box of frogs, for God's sake. Uh, there's quality in all of those people, but there's also madness. Um, and then you throw that into two halfbacks, I think, who are talented but inconsistent. And yeah. that's where I, I just don't see a consistency with Cass and because I don't see a consistency when I look at them I can't pick them to finish high up really I should pick them to finish in the middle because that's the peaking consistency isn't it um, but I, I landed on ninth. Sarah landed on 8th so um, we're progressing here and what does the secret Cass fan think does he think they're <laughs> going to be playoff bound were you one of the ones that vote for the treble uh, no um I think I've got them finishing seventh. I I don't think they'll be getting the bed sheets over from Hull. <laughs> not this year. Not this year. There's a brilliant say what on Radford though. <laughs> I'll I, tease I do, that. Okay. I do kind of think that the very positive cast fans, um, maybe have because because Radford lost his job so early um, a couple of years ago, they've forgotten. What kind of what kind of team he coaches? Uh, they'll be very boring. Um, they're not going to be cast of, of cast of old. Um, well, does he have anyone who can control the game like Sneed and Houghton would? Can Matt no, Shane he... do everyone that was a good influence on that side that won cups in terms of the style? Control everyone. Yeah, this is where the cast are, you know, they're going to be a bit of an enigma this year. And I've got, I've got them finishing, you know, outside the playoffs. I don't see them being a playoff team. But yeah, I had to fit them in somewhere. Um, so I had them seventh. Fair enough. Um, up into sixth place. And I think this wouldn't be a shock because, like, of the teams that have already gone, this is probably the only other one that was a. Uh, Mm, the bottom half team kind of team um, but they're actually finishing just in the top half this year according to the predictions it's Hull FC um, they were 8th last season and cup semi-finalists so you know up and down they were great for the first half of last year terrible for the back half of last year and uh, guess what was a coincidence that when they were terrible there was no Jake the Snake and guess who's going to miss the first two months of the season potentially <laughs> Jake Connor huge player for them um 
So, so that's that's an interesting one. Obviously, all these predictions were made before that was known because that that happened this week. So, so yeah. But average positions, um, you know, when we actually average the scores out rather than the, uh, rather than like ranking them with those scores, have Hull FC only just ahead of Castleford. So the average for Hull FC was six point nine four compared to seven point zero two for Cass. So as you can see, really. The, they are bottom end of playoffs at best, but um, yeah, uh, the, the whole FC fans actually, guys, were pretty realistic in total. Sarah had them sixth. Hull FC is on average expect them to finish sixth too. Um, Langers had them third, plus winning the double, so he was the outlier. And Joshua's granddad had them seventh. Uh, he was the only one to not put them in the playoffs of the of their own fans that made predictions for us uh, the rest have them somewhere between those places um and i think they're more hoping for something better rather than expecting something better from the comments people like Paige and brendan they both made kind of comments about hoping for something better than last year um our friend always in our shadow said he expects normal mid-season injury crisis followed by end of season collapse so <laughs> that's good uh, Joshua's granddad expects uh, them to be competitive against mid-table teams but struggle to beat uh, th- but, uh, sorry to be competitive against mid-table teams struggle but beat the dross and gallantly lose to the big guns um, uh, Scoots if she were here um, would be expanding on what she put on the predictions form of her expectation which is that she has absolutely no idea <laughs> this year so maybe that's why six was, was the pick um, she said I think we are still lacking strength in depth so keeping the first choice 17 to 20 players fit will be key well that's already gone out the window um, still not sure we will see Luke Gale not sure if we will see Luke Gale in a black and white shirt more than we will see him in the skybox um, well if Look, if, if Connor's out, Luke Gale misses serious game time. I think Scott Taylor's coming into the season with an injury, isn't he? There's, you know, a couple of players coming back from lots of injuries last year as well. So even though the turnover of players hasn't been huge and there's only really the Gale for Snade thing to talk about in that regard, is that an upgrade or not? I think it's... I don't think it is. I don't necessarily think they've got worse either. But, yeah, all into the mix... You know, when you look at their squad, guys, when you read through their squad list, you think, this is a good side. Yeah. A powerful side, a talented side. This is a good side. But there's something about them that tells me there's still something slightly broken there. And my pick of seventh, I feel even more confident about now that I know Connor's going to miss game time through injury before inevitably he misses game time through suspension because he's so good for them, so important for them. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. That that's my pick seventh. Um, where do you guys have them? Let's go, David first. Yeah, I pick sixth. Um, uh, I I absolutely agree though that Connor is so vital to them. He was he's the, he's the best player by a mile and one of the best players in the league. Um, I like the coach. I think he did a nice job with them last year. They did fall off second half. Um, I think there's more to him as a coach to come yet. Um, so I, I viewed them as being a bit improved this year versus last year, but they're going to be in the middle of the pack. I expect I expect them to make the playoffs, though. What about you, Al? Yeah, I I agreed with David. Hired him sixth. Um, again, I'm not massively excited by Hull FC, but then I rarely am. Um. Yeah, kind of like I don't know. So uh, very, very average. The, uh, one thing I will guarantee you, though, there'll be a couple of games this year where they get pulverized by teams because it happens every year, and it's games you won't expect either. They'll kind of just not turn up for some reason. Um, oh, was but it yeah, Huddersfield me... at Magic put fifty on them a couple of years ago. Yeah, that was like, where did that come from? There'll, there'll, be, there'll be a couple of games like that, but I have I probably have them winning about half of their games, and I have them finishing sixth as a result. Yeah, yeah, but possibly they have got slightly stronger on paper, but there's just something not on paper about this side. Do you think? Are you convinced that when they do all manage to play? that their spine will be able to work together. I, you know, Houghton seems like a bit of a grumpy <laughs> kit 
to me anyway. <laughs> and I don't think he'll like that they've brought in an, a, a hooker to spell him. They've got several now that that they really need to try and get on the pitch at some point uh, to see if it changes up the attacking patterns. But then you've got spiky characters, really, in Gale, in um, Connor, and in... Um, oh, name's gone from my head. The other half-back for FC, Josh Reynolds. So you've got spiky characters there. Mm. And one thing I always think about is... When a team's behind in games, who galvanises? And I don't think any of them will listen to each other when when they're in a, when they're in a hole. That's my fear. I don't know them all individually well enough at all to make that a solid judgment. But I'm making it as a floaty judgment. <laughs> do you get what I mean, though? Yeah, I do. I do. They're not they're not a very cohesive. The one thing that's in their favour is that they've got a very good first choice prop uh, combination. Yes, that's our, um, and... our my votes for I think for the dream team outside of Wormsley last last year. Yeah, in the, yeah. In the props. And Gale can play well behind some forwards that are going forward. Yeah. So I, 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 this is why this is why they're 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 an an, an enigma. So yeah, because they've got really good centres and wingers as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's like the 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 the, uh, the hole is less than the sum of the parts. <laughs> yeah. And it has. It's uh, genuinely. It's been like that with FC for me for like five years. They they should absolutely be getting to finals, winning things, competing, and they just always drop short. And uh, you're right. It's just there's just some kind of there's just something that's missing. Some kind of some uh, magic point that they're just not quite getting over the line with, and therefore they're. You know they fall into mediocrity, unfortunately. Well, let's move on to the five teams that everyone seems, in general, apart from the few, you know, dissenters who don't like the teams, but everyone fairly thinks consistently these five will be in the playoffs. Uh, fifth place is Leeds. So Leeds fans are optimistic. They're averaging third for their own team. I was reading in Rugby League World, which is back now for us to to read the magazine. That's been out of our lives since the start of covid um they think third as well for leeds uh none of them finish in top though although half of them have them winning the cup and a couple of them have winning the grand final but none of them have gone for a double so but they are very optimistic in general and like i mentioned earlier they, they are the fashionable pick this year it feels like um they did finish fifth last year so overall fifth this year wouldn't be progression but we'll see dr bob expects he says, shockingly good start, awful middle, an amazing finish, is what he expects. Mark Slater says, I expect the Leeds Rhino to be very competitive in 2022. The club have signed some very good players in areas that we have been lacking quality in. Also, our outstanding young players are a year older and wiser and will make our squad a very formidable force in 2022. I'm hoping for a top four place in Super League and hopefully a Challenge Cup final win. Anything above this will be a bonus. I think a Challenge Cup win would be a bonus on top of a top four place mark, but you know, well thought out there. Um, there's optimism from down under. Rich Wilkinson's gone with Rise of the Kids, old heads leading the way, win the grand final. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Wilson expects them to be a lot more competitive and to make the semis, but can't see past last season's finalists. So, again, positive moves for them, but tempered expectations from Paul. That's good to see. Nick Chidlow says, this year, we finally have a stable halfback partnership, and if they remain injury-free and they are able to recapture past NRL form, we could be in for an exciting season. We have a lot of promising young players who need to step up and cement their places. I'm interested to see if Richard Humwicks will be the signing of the, of the off-season and will help us end our fitness and injury issues. Yeah, Hunwicks is the performance analyst who's come over from the Catalan Dragons, so obviously did well with them last year and has had a, a strong career in that area of, of stuff and he, he'll be working with the players in a non match day capacity I guess uh, is the best way to describe it and, and, and has a track record there big names have come in hasn't they Fuzzer Tua, everyone's making a big fuss about, apparently he was great in the friendly at the weekend, um, I need to revert to my notes for this because um, let me tell you his amazing track record in recent years um, six tries in 31 games for club and country over the last three years that's not a lot no 
So we'll see, we'll see. Uh, of course, Ryan Hall scored fuck all in the NRL and then came back and was amazing last year. So, you know, we'll see. Aiden Season, Blake Austin, new halfback partnership. Blitz-